Now, Israel's war has taken an unprecedented toll on Gaza's entire population. The United Nations says 1.9 million Palestinians, that's more than 85% of Gaza's population, have now been uprooted from their homes. Tens of thousands of people pushed to Rafah in the south, which has become the most densely populated area in Gaza. There is little food and no sanitation. The UN says around 2.2 million people, nearly the entire population of Gaza, need food aid to survive. There's a shortage of full fuel and clean drinking water. Desalination plants have shut down because they don't have fuel to operate. And the World Health Organization is worried about the outbreak of disease. Doctors are recording thousands of cases of diarrhea among children, as well as cases of hepatitis A, meningitis, chickenpox, jaundice, and respiratory illnesses. But only 11 out of Gaza's 36 hospitals are functioning, but only partially. And they are struggling to treat the tens of thousands of injured Palestinians. Omiriana Spoliaric is the president of the International Committee of the Red Cross. He joins me now uh, from Geneva. Thanks very much for being with us. So um, we just gave a, a summary there of just how acute the situation is uh, for people um, in Gaza. And it's, it's a whole list of things, as, as we uh, mentioned there. It's, it's a lack of food, a lack of sanitation, and perhaps the most pressing uh, problem right now, the one that's that's been growing more re most recently, is the the breakout of disease. Good afternoon. I've just returned from Israel and the West Bank and visited Gaza. Before that, I can confirm that in Gaza the humanitarian situation is untenable. There's a lack of everything. There's a lack of operational space for the humanitarian actors. But most importantly, there is an acute lack of safety and security for the people anywhere in Gaza. Uh, so w w just talk to us a little bit more about the work that your, the, your organization is doing or trying to do, given the conditions uh, right now, uh, as far as uh, getting, getting the aid uh, to people uh, in Gaza. Is, is some aid getting in? Some aid is getting in. There's a number of trucks coming in, but this is by far not enough given the suffering and the level of the needs of the people. We are focusing our operations on, on the hospitals, on providing medical assistance as much as we can, including through medical teams, surgeons that are there operating around the clock. What I saw in the hospital that I visited was a total exhaustion a density um, because people are seeking refuge in these hospitals. But what I also saw is a lack of medication, a lack of electricity, a lack of water that is necessary for the hospitals to run. Um, but most importantly, a, a, a decreasing surgical capability. Given the high number of casualties and wounded people, this is a serious problem that we are facing at the moment. And we still have great difficulties in moving around, in bringing more material, and also in rotating our staff and medical teams. Indeed, and we got a sense of just how desperate the situation uh, is there uh, for people uh, with the, the, the pictures of the, uh, the aid truck coming in and, and people descending uh, on those trucks to, to get whatever they could, water, provisions, anything they could get their hands on. You, you get the sense uh, as well that there, there's kind of been a, a, a complete breakdown in order there. What I can see is that there is no adequate humanitarian response possible under current circumstances. There has to be a serious de-escalation. Under the current level of hostilities and operations ongoing, we will not be able to provide adequate humanitarian assistance. None of us, none of the humanitarian access actors. There's no protection. There's no safe spaces for people who have been displaced multiple times and with winter coming very fast, this is going to be an acute problem. We have to resume the provision of critical services, notably electricity and water. We are asking for our repair teams to be allowed in. The ICSC has the capability of working with the local actors to at least repair what is possible to be repaired, to be able to improve the access to water, the access to essential needs. 
Good to talk to you, uh, Mirjana Spoliaric. Uh, thanks very much for being with us. Thank you.